Time now for Rant and Rave and filling in for Sylvie. Who are you, by the way? How you guys doing? How did you get back before the rest of the team? That's Ready to go. I to say. He's the Loop Morning Man from 97.9 FM, Pete McMurray. Tommy, I know you can't see this guy. Tommy's at the NFL Network, but he's all dressed up in his Bears garb, what? Bears uniform with shoulder pads. He's ready to go at yeah. it. You guys ready? Topic number one, did Caleb Haney's performance change your opinion of how the Bears will do without Jay Cutler? Well. Let's talk about it. Haney had one job, not to get his team beat, and he failed with three interceptions. You can't lose a turnover battle, especially on the road, if you expect to win. Haney looked more comfortable in the second half, almost brought the Bears back. He was 18 for 36 for 254 yards, two touchdowns, but the three picks were costly. Pete, do you still feel good about the Bears with Haney as the starting quarterback? Quarterback. Well, first of all, how come nobody's talking about Sebastian Janikowski? Isn't the guy 55 years old? I could have swore I saw him play in 1977. All Caleb Haney has to do is manage the game, manage the game. We need three wins and we're in the playoffs. We beat the Chiefs, we beat the Seahawks, and we beat the Vikings at the end of the year. Today was his first NFL start. He, he was going to have some growing pains. We all knew that. But just manage the game, don't turn over the ball, and we go to the playoffs. That's our goal. I wish I could see Pete right now. Look, I agree with what Pete said. I, I think there's three wins on that schedule left. It's a very manageable schedule. They run the football well. They play excellent defense. They're the best special teams group in the league. All they need Caleb to do is keep the rig on the road, as they say. Don't turn it over. Be patient. Don't be overly aggressive. And I think next week you'll see a more patient quarterback. Topic number two, Ron Zook was fired today after seven years as head coach at Illinois. But Illinois football has been to only three bowl games the last 12 years. Why hasn't Illini football had a better showing? Now, Zook was cooked as soon as Illinois lost its sixth in a row yesterday. But here's a fact. At 6-6, six and six, which is hardly anything to be excited about, this is the first time since 1992, 19 years, Tommy, that the Illini are bowl eligible in back-to-back -back seasons. They've been above 500 only three times the last 12 years. Illinois football has been nothing to get excited about. Why? Wow, I wish I had a great explanation. I, I think there have been, as you mentioned, there have been some solid moments, but overall it's been a decade of bad. And I think there's a lot of reasons. First of all, the talent doesn't match up with the upper echelon teams in the Big Ten. To be a consistent winner, you have to have stability and talent at the quarterback position, and they haven't had it. Coaching hasn't been top tier. Uh, and there's no explanation for it. There's no reason for it. It's a great town. It's a great school. It's a great conference. They should be better than they have been. Ron Zook just couldn't get the job done. He goes into Saturday's game. His job is on the line. Illinois bowl chances on the line. And they lose 27-7 to one of the worst teams in the Big Ten. He had six total yards in the first half. The guy should have been fired at halftime. Similar record to Ron <laughs> Turner. It's over. Zook, gone. Zook, gone. The NBA lockout is gone. The NBA is back, but will the lockout affect attendance or the popularity of the game when the game returns on Christmas Day? Now, Santa delivered gifts early this year, like the Bulls and Lakers on Christmas Day, and I can't wait. At 3 a.m. Saturday, Santa ate his cookies, drank his milk, <laughs> and gave us the gift of NBA basketball. 66-game schedule that'll tip off with a Christmas Day triple header. Pete, have the fans learned to entertain themselves without NBA basketball, or will they return in mass? Guys, let me tell you something. No one cares about the NBA until Christmas time. We wake up on Christmas, we open our gifts from Santa, we eat some food, then we watch the NBA. God bless Derrick Rose and the Bulls for going to the Eastern Conference Finals. I was on the bandwagon, you were on the bandwagon, everybody watching on the bandwagon, but we didn't get on the bandwagon till Christmas, okay? No one cares about the NBA until Christmas time. Well, the hardcore NBA fans are going to come back regardless. I don't disagree with that. The peripheral fans, like myself, I don't start getting my NBA buzz on until after the start of the new year. I'm worried about college football and NFL football. People are callous to labor disputes now. I don't think that'll have any effect. I think ultimately there's some great stories. The Bulls, Derrick Rose, Miami, the Dream Team, the Celtics are still relevant. I think people are still going to come out. There's still a buzz. I just want to know on Christmas Day, will fans watch the Bulls and Lakers at night or the Bears and Packers? Think about that one. It's a Bears town, See baby. See you later, linebacker. Yeah. Tommy, stand by. We need to take a timeout. <laughs>
When we return here on the final word, I'm going to put you down, boy. We'll take a quick spin around the rest of the NFL. Tom Brady and the Patriots, oh, they just keep rolling.